What's up, guys, and welcome back to another episode of Planet Zoo. As always, if you guys are enjoying this series, make sure you leave a like in the video. It would be greatly appreciated. In the last episode, we kind of sort of started construction on what was going to be our first restaurant here in the Zuji wetlands. And honestly, I, I didn't want to continue down the path we were going down because I wasn't really liking what I was seeing. So... Today, what I would like to do is actually build a decent looking restaurant. And to do that, we're going to do something that we haven't even done since the zoo's inception, which is try to base the, the facility off of a real life building, you know, something that actually exists in some zoo. So, for example, for those of you that don't remember, our main entrance here is based off of the Brevard Zoo somewhere in Florida. I can't remember exactly where. And then for the restaurant, I want to take inspiration from, I believe it's the San Francisco Zoo's Leaping Lemur Cafe, something to that effect. I'll try to put some images of it up on the screen so you guys can at least see sort of what my vision is for the restaurant overall. But the first thing we need to do is just get like one of the wall pieces constructed because the way that the building's oriented it's basically a copy and paste so as soon as we have one full wall complete we should just be able to copy and paste it all around and then the roof for this is also going to be maybe a disaster we'll see we've done like dome structures before but i can't say we've ever made like a geometric shape building like this so we're gonna get started here by just going into the construction stuff oh also that reminds me just before starting this recording i had gone through our mechanic research, and I researched everything. I don't want us to like run into an issue where we need some specific type of material or some specific look, and we can't do it because we haven't researched it yet. So hopefully we'll have everything now completely researched and we won't run into that issue. The first thing we need to find here through the catalog is that sort of green surrounding that kind of encases the glass panel for the wall. So I'm gonna see if I can find that and maybe some sort of wooden pillar that would look good as well. All right, I think now we've got our materials selected. Everything we need except glass to actually construct one of these um, glass walls. So what we need to do now is grab just any old random wall. We'll go with the Australia wall because I think it's going to accent the um, lighter colored beams that we have pretty well. Let's just place this down anywhere. It doesn't really matter where we put it right now. We're using this as a scale. Whoops, didn't mean to put that one there. Uh, we're using this as a scale for our building. So we can see, you know, how wide it needs to be, how tall it needs to be, everything like that. What we need to do now is basically just start framing out this wall that we've constructed with all of these pieces. And we're going to try to make it look as close to the Leaping Lemur Cafe as we possibly can. We'll see how this goes. I don't know if I decided to time-lapse that or not, but if I did, I sincerely apologize. I know that when you're trying to do a time-lapse and your camera's moving around all crazy, it's always just gonna look bad. But uh, at the same time, a lot of people really enjoy when I include them. So there's some give and take there. But this is the basic idea of what I want all of these walls to look like. So now that's kind of the trickier part about it, I guess. But now what we need to do is basically mirror this design this wall onto the opposite side of the roof line so for that we just have to enter into group edit here 
We're going to get rid of our materials because we don't really need them anymore. Now that we're using a good majority of them on the building. Now that we have that done, we can just take this whole thing here, the whole shebang, copy and paste it on the back side right about there. So this is probably the smallest I'm willing to go. If it doesn't look good after we start duplicating it around, um, then we'll probably just have to go a little bit larger or maybe a little bit smaller. I, I'm not really sure. But let's start by just seeing what happens if we rotate this thing around. It's not that far off of where I want it to be. Let's see. That would be one there. We could do another here. So there is still a gap, though, on the side. So what we would need to do in that case, obviously the roof, we would need to continue that around. Um, but we would also have to fill this in between the, the two beams there with glass or something. Just to make it look a little bit nicer. But the ceiling in here, dude, I'm sure is going to look so good. Let's change our camera mode to free look so we can actually check it out. Oh, yeah. Dude, that's cool. That's really cool. So the gap isn't really supposed to be there, but I kind of like it. We could we could fill the gap with lights if we wanted to do something like that. But that looks really cool. That looks really, really cool. And I definitely like the walls. The glass is a bit thicker than um, whatever the metal beams or, or whatever those things are that we use to, like, break up all the glass. It's a little bit thicker than the beams. So on the inside... You can't actually see the beams, but in the leaping, the actual like leaping lemur cafe, this isn't going to pertain to lemurs whatsoever in the wetland zoo. It just doesn't make sense. Uh, but in the actual zoo, they do have some angled beams. If you want to follow my cursor, kind of going up at an angle like this to the peak and then down to the other side. So I might do that as well. I think that'll help us as far as like the inside or interior decor goes, but I don't hate it. I actually, I actually kind of like it, but I want to see what it would look like if we were to go like one, one roof larger. So let's go back to our standard camera mode here. We'll enter into edit this structure. Once again, we're just going to grab this little section of roof, bring it up ever so slightly. And now we can just select the whole thing once again, copy, paste it onto the backside, and we'll start duplicating this thing around again see if maybe a larger structure overall will help the uh the shape so we've got that in place going to duplicate once again and we're just going to duplicate it around see what we're uh going to end up with here so the gap has increased the gap in between the two beams has definitely increased now but i still don't hate it and actually the roof from the outside kind of looks cooler in a weird way I don't know. I, I kind of dig that. Let's go back to the free look camera so we can see the roof now. Ooh. Ooh, with the additional, like, little slit up there in the roof. That looks really sick, dude. Okay, this one's probably my favorite. I think I like this one more than the slightly smaller version that we just did. But again, the only trouble is going to be completing the roof and just trying to make it look more normal overall. I guess we don't have to we don't have to duplicate the roof when we're duplicating the walls. Two very boring minutes later. I haven't changed the size of the building just yet, but I have separated the roof from the walls. So what I want to experiment with is just just see what would happen if we were to disable angle snap and just rotate each roof piece until the gap in between the two is is negligible. You know, it's not perfect, but I think that'll uh, get us going anyways. And then we'll just keep duplicating it around. Pretty rushed. I don't think this is what we're going to end up going with, so I'm not going for perfection on this. But we'll keep on rotating around until it doesn't line up anymore. And it looks like that would be the last one. So even if we were to continue the, the duplication of this, and bring it around no matter no matter what we do it's just not going to line up properly and it's going to look weird not only on the the back side there but also on the front so let's see now let's back it up some more and let's let's go back to the smaller version of the whole building and we'll see if doing it that way would look a little bit nicer you know what maybe we don't even have to separate the roof from the walls 
at least for the smaller version of this, because if I remember right, the gap in between each of the beams was significantly less than that of the larger structure. So let's just straight up go into duplicate here. Again, angle snap is going to be disabled for this, and we'll rotate until the beams actually line up. So right about there looks pretty good. Even in this configuration, we would still have to fill in a little bit of the roof there on the corner. But I'm hoping... Nope. Nope. It's not going to work here either. Dang it. Okay, so larger or smaller, I guess it really doesn't matter. We do still have a pretty big gap there on that end. This is a little bit more difficult than I remember it being. And I think that's just because of the, the size of the wall that we decided to go with from the get-go. Many, many minutes later. I think I just shaved a good 10 years off my life, just in the span of about an hour, trying to create this little insert for the side of the wall here. I'm not super proud of the way that I had to go about constructing the glass, too. You can see there's quite a few overlapping panels. It's just such an awkward size, like... They don't, they don't actually make a glass pane that is that specific size. So I had to stack them and re-rack them and, and whatever. But um, it's looking pretty good. I'm actually pretty happy with it. The roof now is going to be the next big hurdle. I think filling in these tighter corner gaps is going to be pretty easy. Um, but filling this area in, these larger spaces, it's going to be a little bit more involved. So I'm going to just see what i can do again all right i've decided that we're just going back to basics because duplicating the roof along with the walls wasn't working no matter what i did it just wasn't gonna line up right and i was like why is that not working out and now that you look at it from an aerial perspective you can really see just how weird and wonky shape this building actually is so what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna grab our original roof and we're just going to start rotating this bad boy around. It's going to clip through in a couple of spots, but that's going to be an easy fix. All we have to do is just raise it up once we're done. So there's our first rotation. Again, the roof is no longer following the same like angle as the walls below it. So it may end up looking a little strange, but we're going to give it a shot. Because honestly, I'm kind of out of options at this point. This was my only idea for today. And uh, it's always kind of a bummer when you just can't quite execute. But I'm not giving up yet. Not giving up. So, as I said, it is going to be clipping through in a couple of different spots. But from outside, looking in, it seems pretty good. Even, like, once you get up underneath, you can't really tell. Well, in some spots, maybe, like, right over here, you can kind of tell that the roof doesn't really align properly. But I like it. For some reason, I like it. And it's not just because it's our only option at this point. The top of the roof looks fantastic. Let's go ahead, because these are all separate pieces now. Let's select each and every one of them. And then we're just going to bring this up until it stops clipping through, probably over here. I think that's going to be the highest point. So we'll bring it up till about one more click right there. That looks pretty good. No more clipping. Now from the bottom side... Does it still look good? Ooh, yeah. Yeah, it still looks fantastic. I think the issue that I made initially was that the glass wall is just too big. I should have messed around with it a little bit more and done my duplication stuff before actually constructing the wall um, because then we'd actually be able to get the proper size and maybe we would have been able to duplicate it all the way around without having to do this weird insert bit on the two sides. But that actually gives us a nice point to build off of because we're going to need hallways leading to other things inside of the, the restaurant. It's not just going to be this one building. So now we've got the base structure complete. A few moments later. This is what it looks like with a much better concrete pad to sit on. We've also got the restaurant placed down over here right behind the grandstands for the wild water buffalo. Dude, this restaurant is actually going to have fantastic animal viewing. Like while you're eating... We've got the wild water buffalo over here on the left. And then on this side, if they ever actually cross their little bridge, we also have the Nile Lechui ready to uh, entertain some guests. Oh, that reminds me, actually. Speaking of guests, this transformer is not going to fly right here anymore. It's going to be way too close to the restaurant. So let's just 
bring it away really quick so we can see where we actually need power. Basically right over top of the restaurant, which is not ideal. Uh, let's try placing it clear out here and we can just make a new bridge for the mechanics to get across the little river. Super simple, but I definitely think it's gonna help us out significantly. So actually with that moved out of the way, that's gonna open up this whole little corner lot right over here. Not 100% sure what we could put over here. We could just expand the restaurant over that direction as well. Probably not a terrible idea. I'm not gonna worry about it right now. Maybe we could do some bathrooms or something later on. Um, but for right now, my main focus is just gonna be building up our new portion of the restaurant. So um, those original walls that we had in here before we actually even constructed the glass wall, I think they were the Australian wall or something like that. That's the wall that I'm gonna go with for basically the whole rest of the outside of this restaurant. I don't know if it's gonna look very good per se, uh, but we're gonna give it a shot. We'll see what we think at the end of it. What follows is a brief construction montage. We hope you enjoyed this brief construction montage. Honestly, I don't even remember what I said last. Uh, I kind of blacked out, but the whole building's done, kind of. It looks it looks pretty good. I definitely think that uh, we followed along pretty well with our inspiration photos from the San Francisco Zoo, um, at least for this portion of the building. But this thing, this was weird, you guys. I couldn't figure out like, how to first of all where to put the windows and then how to actually do the roof line for this because unlike this one you know we're not just duplicating and copying and pasting in a dome shape for this one we actually had to construct like an a-frame and then there was this weird little bit over here uh, because we had this this wall sort of clipping through the top of the roof so i just decided to add another roof on top of it just going the opposite direction i don't think it looks awful but I wish, I wish I could have come up with something else. Though, now we're at least ready to start adding in tables in here and uh, actually get the restaurant up and running. So let's figure out what we want to do there. I'm thinking, oh, hang on a minute. I forgot that these are like basically set up just for diners. Like that's what they would really look good in is, is pretty much just a diner. I might still try them upstairs, but let's at least tackle the main floor first because down here is going to be really really easy so i'm just going to start by putting one table in this corner and then since we can't really space these out in a grid i don't think yeah there's no grid selection um, i'm just going to place them where they make sense so like in front of these windows here get a couple going right there then over in this corner as well that's probably way too many tables but i think that looks really nice now see like just adding the tables alone makes it feel like a restaurant already. So let's click down here on the restaurant itself. And then we'll just try to link every single table, at least in the main restaurant portion for now. See, that's already 16. You know what? Let's just go for it. We'll try to select all of them. We'll see what it actually does. Okay, we can select all but just the one. Oh, not within 99 feet. Interesting. See, I didn't know that that constraint existed. Only restaurant tables within 99 feet of the facility and not in a dangerous habitat can be linked. Are people actually putting tables and chairs inside of habitats? That's next level, dude. I, I couldn't commit to that. Now that we have all the tables connected, though, we should be able to hit play here. And before too long, hopefully some guests start making their way out to the restaurant. Again, the, the main idea the main reason, I guess, for creating the restaurant out here in the first place is just so that we could hopefully get a little bit more foot traffic out to the outskirts of the zoo. The only attraction out here right now is the wild water buffalo, and I hate to say it, but that's just not enough for these guests. They need something else. While we wait for the restaurant to actually get up and running, if we take a look at our facilities down here, we have a couple of different options now for transport rides. So as we sit right now, Guests are just expected to walk everywhere on their own two feet. We're not giving them any lifts or anything of the sort. And I want to change that. I feel like by the time guests are going to get out to the outskirts, they're going to be a little tired. You know, they're going to want to sit down, unwind a little while. And uh, to prevent that from happening, we, we want to keep this zoo go, go, go all the time. 
So I'm kind of tempted to add in a transport ride. The only problem is... Well, first of all, we need to think of where they're going to enter the ride and where they're going to exit the ride. So as far as the entrance goes, it makes the most sense to have it as far forward or as far to the front of the zoo as we possibly can. And then the exit would ideally be as far to the outskirts, as far to the outside of the zoo as we can possibly get it. So if we were to place the entrance maybe right behind this, we've got a little bit of open space over there. And then the exit, just on this little uh, peninsula. Oh, Rodrigo, about to die of old age. Dude, the capybara just dropped like flies. I swear, every episode we have at least one pass away. It's incredibly sad, but you know what? It's, it's just kind of how things go. Let's have a look-see at our restaurant, see if any of these tables are filling up. Uh, not, looking, not looking too hot so far. We've got a couple of guests walking through here, about to enter the black hole. We'll see where they're gonna go sit at we've got one group of people in the main eating area that's good to see anyone else oh there we go right down there on the main floor oh wait you know what i just thought of do the staff resting facilities give off a negative impact on guests they absolutely do this is the worst spot we could have put that every single guest whether they're you know just walking around out here or actually trying to go sit down they're going to interact with that red zone. And that is going to make them very, very depressed for whatever reason. That's just how it works. So we may end up having to adjust this entire building. Um, but for right now, I'm not going to worry about it. Because that sounds like a lot of work. And I would much rather create a transport ride. So originally, I wanted to use uh, this 4x4 vehicle. Though the way I see it, it'd be way more of a pain to try to create bridges that resemble roads than it would be to just use a train. So we're going to try to set this down very gently right about there. And then now it's just like Planet Coaster all over again. Gotta love that. Okay, let's pause things though so we can, you know, run the test at the end. But um, this is going to be pretty simple. I think we'll just try to bring it up to the front again, right behind like our smaller exhibit species area. And then because we're not going to be able to go up and over the parking lot, maybe we could go under the parking lot, I guess. Let's try to go under. If that doesn't work, we're just going to have to loop around. We're laying in the last piece of track right now. Oh no, no, we don't want that. Okay. Auto tunnel. We need to disable that right here. That was almost, a big oopsie. So let's back it up a little bit more. Right till about there. Dude, look at that. So there's a couple of spots where we'll have to dip the terrain down as well. Um, but I don't think the, the train is actually going to get hung up on any of the terrain issues that we have. Check this out. And yes, I did bank the track. Okay? I, I promise. I promise. For this section. That was the only, like, uphill portion of the entire track so we've got that comes all the way back through here all the way around to the front into the next station it then drops down into a very a very nice looking tunnel all the way through here and up on the opposite side of the tree line once again heading all the way around oh no i forgot i'd switched my camera angle there we go back to standard all the way around over to here again. So, uh, it says we have a problem. Oh, station checklist must be completed before we can open it. Obviously, we've got to place our entrance. Okay, I think that's our cues for station 11. Pretty simple, but very effective, or at least I hope so. So let's cancel out of that, and then we'll make our way over to station 12 now. We've got to place the entrance over here. And then also the exit. Uh, the entrance on this one, I'm actually going to put at the front of the station. And I'm going to place the exit maybe like right about here. So that hopefully we can just have a path come straight off the exit and connect right up to there. Perfect. All right. Now, before we go any further, I think it's really, really important that I now take the time to go through and just delete every single, you know, scenery piece that might be in our way. Whether it's a bush, a tree, a rock. You name it, if we find something in the middle of the track, 
We've got to get rid of it. Let's try to open both of the stations. There we go. Okay, so far so good. We've already got our first group of guests using it. So the nice thing about this, truthfully, is whether the guests are at the outskirts of the zoo or they just entered the zoo, that's sort of going to determine which station is the entrance for them and which station is the exit. Obviously, if they're getting on clear out here, their objective is likely to go back to the entrance. Whereas if they're getting on here, their objective is likely to go all the way to the outskirts of the zoo. So hopefully this, you know, helps them get around a little bit faster, a little bit easier. But let's enter into the ride cam. I want to pick my seat. Oh, we can be the conductor? Um, maybe not. Maybe not. Yeah, it's one of those robo trains, isn't it? I've got gotcha. you. Let's see what other cameras we have then. This is guest facing. We have orbit. Okay. Chase. Look forward, which is kind of just looking right into a bar there. We've got front bumper. That's a really cool one. Kind of terrifying, but really cool. And then wing as well. That's going to be like just to the left of the train. And here we go. All right. I'm going to leave it on guest facing, I think. Maybe back in here. Or wait, wait, wait. Let's go back to the bar one. The end is actually not that bad. Like the caboose, the chase cam. Kind of sick. If you're wondering why I decided to go up right here, it was really just so that... Let's just exit out of that camera. It was really just so that from, like, this angle, walking to the back of the zoo, it just looks a little cooler. It would have looked way more lame if the track was just on the ground the whole time. Wait up, train. I gotta get back in the, in the cam. So, yeah, chase is not bad. Look forward is probably a pretty solid contender here. But now we can actually cruise around the entire outskirts of the zoo. Or the entire perimeter of the zoo. Whatever you want to call it. Tomato, tomato. What about if we speed up? There we go. And just like that, we're already... Oh my lord. Dude. This thing... This thing filled up quick, you guys. That filled up insanely fast. What is this about? Hang on. No, I'm not trying to... I'm not trying to decorate. Why can I not... Why can I not click on that alert? Oh, it's the it's the staff room inside of the uh, restaurant anyways. I know that's having a significant negative impact on the guests. I am aware of this horrible design flaw, uh, but it's just something we're going to have to live with for right now, and uh, we'll try to fix it later on. But yeah, this queue, I'm thinking we're, I'm thinking we're going to need to make it quite a bit larger. But uh, as you can see from riding on the train here. We have no more debris getting in the way of the uh, the actual like railroad itself, which is obviously a good thing. Coming up on the backside of the underpass there. And then all the way around once again to the opposite side of the zoo. Dude, this is so cool. I'm glad we went with the train also and not the 4x4. The 4x4 is cool, but first of all, the train will carry way more people. So, I mean, that's a huge bonus as far as I'm concerned. But then this just looks cooler. It sounds cooler. And here we are pulling back into the station once again. On the outskirts of the zoo this time. Dude, this thing packed. Like, compare that line to this line. There's hardly a line over here. Okay, I'm aware that it's having negative impacts on guests. Believe me, I know this much. But, how much does this actually cost? Is it free? No, it's a dollar. Just a dollar to ride the train. Honestly, that's a great price. I, I think we're going to go ahead and just leave that price. We can increase the speed, though. Let's bump that up to, like, 15 miles per hour. It was at 10 from the factory, so I, th I think 15's fair. And I am pooped, you guys. I am worn out. This restaurant absolutely kicked my butt. I was not expecting it to take me this long, nor was I expecting to have so many difficulties when constructing the thing. This portion of the building, I understand. It's just a very odd shape. Totally understandable why that would take a significant amount of time. But this thing, I mean, it's just a rectangle. 
But I do think that's where we're going to wind things down at for today. So once again, if you guys did enjoy, please leave a like, leave a comment, help support the dream by smashing that subscribe button, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Peace.